Am I the antagonist for not letting my half-sister wear anything of my mom's on her wedding day? I am a 30-year-old female, and I have a half-sister, 23-year-old female, who will be getting married sometime in 2025. My half-sister is my dad's child. She is actually the child he had after an affair while he was married to my mom. My parents divorced when my mom learned that my dad had cheated on her, and things became more tense after she found out that the person he cheated with had gotten pregnant. My dad told her that the other woman was out of the picture, and my mom could have the second child she always wanted, and we could be a family. I was there for part of the conversation because my dad wanted me to be excited for a sibling and thought it would win my mom over. My mom stood firm with my dad. My dad would tell my half-sister that we had the same mom. He would talk like that around me and tell me to shut up when I told him to stop lying. He also told me that my mom could be a kind person and step up for a child who had no mother. According to him, the affair partner found someone else to be the affair partner of and didn't want to know my half-sister. When I was 11 my mom died, so I went to live with my dad. About a year later my dad got married. Even after he got married, he taught my half-sister that my mom was her mom. I'll say that whatever hope we had of a relationship was ended by my dad doing this because she wouldn't believe me when I told her she had a different mom. She hated me for not giving her photos and stuff of moms and for not making my family acknowledge her as their granddaughter like I was acknowledged. My dad's wife never became a mom to my half-sister, even though she admitted to desperately wanting one because she was so hung up on my mom. My mom left me everything, and my grandparents took care of the stuff for me until I became independent. I wore some of my mom's wedding jewelry on my wedding day, as well as her veil. I didn't invite my dad or any of his family including my half-sister, but she saw photos. She reached out to me on social media and told me she wanted some of my mom's stuff for her wedding, and I said no. She told me that now is not the time to be selfish, and I told her she is entitled to nothing, and she will have to find other things to wear. She called me names, and I told her that dad should really have admitted the truth to her by now. She said she didn't know why I was so adamant that she wasn't my mom's child, and it's not fair because I got to be raised by mom for 11 years while she got nothing, and for no reason at all. Afterward, my dad's wife reached out and told me how upset my half-sister was and asked me to please consider giving her something because my dad really messed her over, and she feels hated by my mom and by me. My half-sister messaged me again after this and told me that I was being really unfair to her and how I made my mom's abandonment of her even worse. Am I the asshole? Not the antagonist. Tell her you'd be happy to let her have something if a DNA test shows your full siblings. If she's so certain, that should be a great offer. Make sure dad's nearby so you can watch him try to figure out how to stop it. The funniest outcome, given the affair partner apparently moved on to another affair immediately, would be finding out you're not siblings at all. She never seen her birth certificate? Surely her mother is named on there. I second what a lot of people are saying. Tell her if she gets a DNA test proving your maternal siblings, then you'll share some of your mother's stuff with her. Since that's impossible, she'll have to face facts. She told me now is not the time to be selfish, says the person who has only contacted you so that she can have things that have nothing to do with her. You couldn't have made it any clearer. Am I the antagonist for parking our car in front of our driveway when it blocks our neighbor's truck? Are we the jerks for parking our car on the street when it blocks our neighbor's truck? We have a really good relationship with all our neighbors, which is a priority for our family. The neighbors across the street are especially great, and we enjoy chatting with them. I was very touched recently when my dad, who also lived on our street, passed and they attended his service. They cried with my mom, brought soup for her and are just really great people. All that to say, I really don't want to be a jerk as I value our relationship. For years, they have parked their large delivery trucks in their driveway and sometimes on the street in front of their house. This has never been an issue. However, they recently got a new delivery truck that is much larger than the previous ones. So much so that to get it out of their driveway, the turn is so wide the truck comes to our curb and grazes the front of our driveway. We recently put up a basketball hoop in our driveway for our four young kids, aged four to nine, and when they play during the day, I've been parking our van at the front of our driveway, parallel to the street but blocking our driveway so the basketball doesn't roll into the street when they play, and so our kids don't chase it into the street. Our neighbor messaged us to let us know that when we park like that, it's almost impossible for them to get the delivery truck in and out of their driveway. Our driveway is not facing theirs, but the truck has a really wide turn. As I was watching them pull out this morning, I realized that if we have a car parked on the street really anywhere in front of our house, it will be impossible for them to pull their truck out. I don't want to be limited to keeping our van only in our driveway, as I want my kids to be able to play there especially as the weather gets better. We bought this particular house to enable our kids to play outside. I also want my guests to be able to park in front of our house, which will now be an issue. I feel like our neighbors should have considered that they wouldn't be able to get that large truck in and out of their driveway if anyone is parked on the street, and considered that before they got such a large commercial vehicle to park on our residential street. However, I also know that that ship has sailed. They already have the truck, it affects their livelihood, and if we park in front of our house, they are basically stuck. Are we the jerks if we continue to park in front of our house, or let guests park in front of our house, knowing they won't be able to get their truck in and out? 
Not the antagonist, but this isn't an ah uh, or not situation. It's not reasonable to expect you not to park in front of your own house. Setting polite boundaries and expectations is key here. Maybe they can return the truck or find a different solution. Don't be in awe about it when you talk to them. Suggest compromises instead. This is their mistake to fix. Am I the antagonist for posting photos of my parents on my social media because my dad's wife can't do anything about it? My mother died nine years ago. I, 17-year-old male, was the oldest, and my twin siblings are two years younger, but they remember mom as well as I do. It was two years later when dad met his second wife, Jen, and she moved in with us about a year afterward. They got married a few months after that. When Jen moved in, we had to remove all photos of mom from the house. We were allowed one photo in each of our bedrooms, but it had to be discreet so Jen wouldn't see them when our doors were open, which was a rule in dad's house. We hated it. I always felt like dad took away our home to make it Jen's home. I don't see it the same way. I feel like I live with the sort of parent who changed badly when mom died, and the spouse he met afterward, who I don't think I'll ever care much about. The positive aspect of it all is that we were able to maintain a relationship with our maternal family. This is the most dad-like behavior from dad since mom died. Our grandparents used to babysit us when our parents needed it. Sometimes they had us for days at a time when our parents went away. Plus, they were always around when mom was alive. Dad keeping that relationship going is one of the only reasons I don't completely hate him for prioritizing Jen's comfort over ours. My grandparents and two of my aunts still have lots of photos of mom in their house. They love having photos around and never took any down after mom died. They even have wedding photos and such. When Jen became aware of this, she got annoyed. She tried to confront one of my aunts about it, saying it wasn't healthy for us to see photos of our deceased mother everywhere. My aunt told her to mind her own business. I use social media. Lately, I have been using it to see photos of my mom again and to share memories of our family when we were a complete family, not just three siblings who essentially lost their dad in many ways after mom passed away. I know it bothers Jen, which makes me enjoy it even more. I only use social media when I'm with my maternal family and log out when I'm at dad's house so Jen can't make me take it down. But I upset her last week, and she has been angry ever since. I posted three photos of my family and talked about my parents and the many happy memories I have of when we were a family. I didn't mention Jen, and I didn't share any photos of her. This bothered her, especially the fact that I focused so much on my mom. She told me to stop posting photos of my mom and to take down the family post. She said I was disobeying her and dad by posting them. She got dad involved and he asked me to take them down, but I refused. He left it at that, but Jen said I was posting them despite her which she believed was wrong. She told me she deserved more respect than that. The jealousy from Jen is more about her not liking that dad lost mom than about my siblings and me. Am I the asshole? Not the antagonist Jen cannot expect your mom's memories to just be forgotten like that because she doesn't like it. You're allowed to remember her and you're allowed to cherish her memories. How insecure does one have to be to be jealous in such a way? Your dad and stepmom are the assholes who expected you to just remove all memories of your mother. That's messed up. Best of luck my man. You do you and celebrate your memories of your mom however you want to. Sorry for your loss. Would I be the antagonist if I don't take my sibling to Disney? I, 18 years old female, and my sister, 13 years old female, Sophie, have been saving up to go on a Disney World trip since I was about 15. We definitely could have saved up much faster if we wanted to, but we were mostly collecting spare cash, a quarter here and there and a $20 bill we had forgotten about, stuff like that. Anyways, now that I'm finally 18, I promised my sister that I would take her to Disney World this summer. She is so excited to go, she's even planning out matching outfits. The problem is, when I asked my mom to confirm if it would be okay to take her for a few days, like four days, four nights, my mom asked me if I was taking our younger brother, 10 years old male, too. I said no, Sophie and I have been saving up for this for years, and we unfortunately don't have enough money to take our brother. In addition, my brother has some behavioral challenges, and he would be very challenging to take on a trip by myself while still trying to give Sophie a great trip. My mom was livid, saying how my brother would be so upset and left out. I said that I was sorry and explained that I wanted to be able to give Sophie a good time, and due to the money issue, I couldn't take him even if I wanted to. My mother called me selfish and said how my blatant favoritism is terrible, and told me that unless I take both of my siblings to Disney, nobody can go at all. As you can imagine, my sister is very upset at not being able to go. We've been looking forward to this trip for years. I said that if my mom paid for my brother and herself she could tag along and take care of him, but I would still pay for Sophie. She was furious at my suggestion, saying that I knew it wasn't in the budget for her. We're comfortably middle class, but we don't have a ton of money for vacations like that. And if I was paying for one kid, I needed to pay for both. I just don't know what to do. My dad gave me permission to take Sophie to Disney during a week he has custody. But that's kind of going behind my mom's back. I would do it, but first I want to know if I'll be the asshole for not taking my brother along too. Not the antagonist for not wanting to take your brother to Disney. 
It's a tough situation having to supervise a 13-year-old and a severely autistic 10-year-old with high needs in a busy place like Disney. Your mom's expectations are unreasonable, and it's not fair to you or your sister. Your dad should handle the situation with your mom. Just make sure to check all the custody rules to avoid any trouble. Am I the antagonist for moving out of my parents' house when my brother and his family moved in? There is a lot of unnecessary backstory that I will leave out. I rented my parents' house after they retired and moved south. I paid slightly below market rate. The plan was for me to save up and eventually buy the house at a great price. They would then give that money to my brother as his part of their estate. My share was the subsidized rent and the very subsidized purchase agreement. Everyone thought this was fair. Until my brother's wife started running up debts, they couldn't cover. This led to them losing their home and needing help. I love my brother and my nephews so when my mom asked me if they could move in, I talked to my husband and we agreed. We are in the process of adopting two siblings, but we are still not there. It was only going to be temporary so why not? Half off the rent for a few months would totally help us with the down payment and expenses. They moved in in February. When March rolled around, I sent the transferred half of my usual rent to my parents. My mom called to ask me where the rest was. I said I assumed that Brad was paying the other half. Nope. Is your in dirty white? I had to pay all the rent. I asked why I had to pay for them to stay in my house. My mom said it wasn't my house yet and that I was being mouthy. I saw the writing on the wall. I paid the rent and started looking. We had a good amount saved up, and we didn't need a big old house with lots of maintenance issues we had been handling. We paid the full rent in April as well, but we moved out and into the house we closed on. It was ready for immediate possession. With my husband and me having decent income and 25% down, it went smoothly. The only downside is the much smaller yard, but it is a block away from a public park so we aren't losing much. I did tell my parents we were leaving. On May 1st, I got another call from my mom. She wanted the rent. I said I wasn't living there anymore. She said I was breaking our deal. I said that our deal never included me paying for my brother's living expenses. She said that they couldn't afford to cover the mortgage without my rent. I told her to get money from my brother. He was still working. She said he was trying to pay his debts. I said that his wife should get a job. I could write a much longer post just on this discussion. Long story short, she said I was being cheap and vicious to my brother and to my parents. We are settling into our newish house and just ignoring them for a while. But I'm wondering if maybe I'm wrong. Am I the asshole? Am I the antagonist? Not the antagonist. You gave them more notice of leaving than they gave you that you'd still be paying full rent to house a second family. You didn't sign up to start supporting your brother and his whole family. Your deal wasn't to cover rent for them, and it's not your responsibility. Plus, you were courteous when you paid the full rent and informed your mom you were moving out. Honestly, it sounds like you did the right thing for your family, especially since you're trying to adopt. Owning a home and not having too many people in it are major factors in that process. Your brother and parents should figure out their own finances instead of expecting you to foot the bill. Am I the antagonist for telling my friend that they can't move in with me and my partner? When I, 19 years old male, moved into my university halls, I met my friend Sam, 20 years old male, as we share a flat. Sam isn't someone I would choose to live with out of choice. He's messy and would rather drink his money away than pay his bills. He's constantly asking his parents for money. Sam also isn't a fan of my girlfriend Imogen, 18 years old female, because her family has money. Imogen and I have been together for three years. I love her more than anything. We've known each other since we were kids. Before Christmas, when Imogen came to stay at my university flat, we had a look at some flats. Imogen is hoping to attend university in my city in September, and her mom decided she was buying a flat so Imogen had somewhere safe to live. The flats we were looking at her mom had shortlisted, and she just had to pick the one she liked. Despite being told no, Sam tagged along. At this point, I was planning on staying in halls again for my second year. When everything was sorted with the flat purchase, Imogen and her mom asked me if I wanted to move in with Imogen. Her mom said that she wouldn't charge me rent, but it would be up to us to pay the bills, etc. I jumped at the chance to move in with Imogen. Her mom is absolutely wonderful. When I couldn't afford my train home at Christmas, she paid for it so I could see my family and has refused to take any money back from it. When I was packing to leave for university, she bought me a delivery pass for the nearest supermarket so I could focus on my studies. She's always said if I ever need anything, that I just need to ask her. I haven't because I don't want to take advantage of her generosity, nor do I want her to think I'm dating Imogen for money. Sam saw me coming out of the office in our building last week and asked what I was doing. I told him I had put notice in to not have my contract renewed because I was moving in with Imogen. Sam didn't have plans for where he was going to live next year. He just got excited and ran off. That night in the pub, he drunkenly announced to our friend group he was moving in with me and Imogen next year and no longer had to worry about where he was going to stay. I told Sam that he absolutely wasn't moving in with us and even if I wanted him to, it's not my choice as Imogen's mom owns the flat. Sam has now been crying to everyone that he's homeless next year and it's all Imogen's fault. Our friends are telling me that I should just let him stay. Some have found Imogen's Instagram and have messaged her calling her a bitch and saying she needs to let Sam live with us. Am I the asshole? 
Not the antagonist, but it's important to address how your friends are treating Imogene. Bullying her is completely out of line and needs to be stopped immediately. Also, apologizing to Imogene is necessary, as she shouldn't be dragged into this drama that isn't her fault. And seriously, those who are messaging your girlfriend are definitely not true friends. You deserve better company. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.